What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, an update from Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is really his first public update aside from the podcast. This is his first social media post about his pacemaker surgery that he had last week. Um, he already said in the podcast that as of the Monday that he got the surgery, from Monday to Friday, he was already up and able to walk around and travel to attend an environmental event. But in this update, he gives an even bigger update and says, thank you, I've gotten so many kind messages from all over the world, but a lot of people have asked if my pacemaker will cause any problems with FUBAR Season 2. Absolutely not. I'll be ready to film in April, and you can only see it if you're really looking for it. So this is cool to see that not only is he up and walking around a week later, but in the following month from having this pacemaker installed, he's going to be filming an action series, which I think is pretty impressive um, and pretty motivational, really, the fact that this is going to be his fourth heart-related surgery. He had one in the 90s, um, and then he had two. I think one was 2018, one was 2020, then the most recent one being this one. But I'm glad to hear that at 76, Arnold is not only doing well, but it seems like he's recovering great to be able to film ne literally next month. So shout out to the Terminator himself. Now, next up in the news, we've got some updates of Raphael Brandau. As we get closer to the one-week-out mark from the Arnold Classic South America next weekend. So these updates were from a YouTube video. They are pictures of his cell phone. They're pictures of him on his cell phone. And apparently, the reason, part of the reason why these are making the rounds is because he's weighing 121 kilos in these pictures. and he's t Which is 267 pounds. And he's fasted in these pictures. Which is not small. I mean, that's been the criticism against Raphael that he's just not big enough, that he gets lost in these lineups, that he gets out muscled, that he needs to put on size. And I think that 270 pounds, fasted, shredded, depleted, is certainly not small. And I think his appearance at the Arnold Classic Ohio is, without question, the best version of Raphael that we'd ever seen. Without question, I would say he's one of the most improved bodybuilders of the last couple of years. Um, I'd say maybe next to Samson because Samson has had a pretty rapid career trajectory. Um, but what we saw from Raphael in Ohio was undoubtedly extremely improved, best version we've ever seen. But the question is, will we see a better version of Raphael at the Arnold Classic South America? He says this is like his big goal. This is the show that he really wants to win. I believe even prior to the Arnold Ohio, he had even said in a YouTube video that while, yes, the Arnold Ohio is obviously important to him it's a very prestigious title he said still you know during the prep for Ohio that his main goal was really the Brazil show so it kind of makes you wonder if I wouldn't say the Arnold was a warm-up show for him but it kind of makes you wonder if his main focus this whole time was really nailing it at his hometown show in Brazil so I have a feeling that even as impressed as we were with Raphael in Ohio I just have a feeling we're going to see an even better version of him in Brazil. He doesn't have to travel. He doesn't have to leave the country. He doesn't have you know, jet lag, long flights, adjusting to a new country. He's got a little bit of a home field advantage. He's been saying for a while that this is the show he really wants to peak for. And now he's done a major show with his new coach, Neil Hill, because keep in mind, he wasn't working with Neil Pryor. So he's got that show, the Arnold, under his belt. So now they've kind of got a feel for how well they work together going into this Arnold Classic South America I think we're going to see something really impressive. And again, this is certainly not going to be an easy victory for Raphael. Like I've said in the last video, Tony O'Burton on paper, eighth place at the Olympia, New York pro champion, not going to be an easy guy to beat. Carlos Thomas Jr., even though he hasn't won a pro show yet, he was top three at the Texas Pro. Very impressive bodybuilder. We haven't seen much of him. Don't really know how he's looking. And good veto, really the complete wild card here. Never seen him compete in a pro show, but he looks great on social media. He looks great in his physique updates, but we really don't know. Good Vito could be first here. He could be dead last. We have no idea, that, and that's what's fun about this show. But let me know what you guys think based on what we've seen so far, who we know is in this show so far. Who do you guys have winning the Arnold Classic South America? Now, next up in the news, we've got confirmation now that Angel Calderon, the 212 bodybuilder, is going to be doing open at the New York Pro, not 212. So we knew he was doing the New York Pro, but we got confirmation today that he's actually doing the open division. Now, this won't be the first time that he's done an open show. In 2021, he actually won the Big Man Weekend competition in the open bodybuilding class and qualified for the open bodybuilding Olympia. 
He's won countless 212 shows. In this most recent 212 Olympia, he was top three behind Keon Pearson and Sean Clarita. In the year prior, in 2022, he was actually runner-up at the Olympia to Sean Clarita. So he's a really good bodybuilder. He's most known for his conditioning. He's a little bit shorter. Even in 212, he's kind of one of the shorter guys. But he's stacked with muscle, really conditioned. And I think this adds an interesting wild card to the New York Pro. We've talked a lot about Nick Walker versus Tony O'Burton. But a guy like this, that is a top three Olympian, even though it's 212, this is a guy that could really shake things up. I still think that Nick Walker is the on-paper favorite, but you could definitely end up seeing a scenario where it's Nick versus Angel for the one and two spots, and maybe not necessarily Nick versus Tonio. And even in these updates at this far out from the New York Pro, you can see the crazy conditioning that Angel's in. I think this is going to be an interesting show. I think all these shows coming up are shaping out to be just really entertaining bodybuilding competitions. Now, next up in the news, we did also get a couple physique updates from Hadi Chupin that he said were from today. Granted, we know that Hadi's not doing any more shows until the Olympia, nor does he need to. He's really proved his point with these back-to-back -back Arnold Classic victories. And now he's focusing on going into the Olympia, trying to reclaim his title. But just a little bit of that bodybuilding fan in me, if it weren't such a pain in the ass for him to get his visa and travel... How cool would it be if he went over to Brazil and just won the trifecta? I don't even know that anybody's ever done that. Won three Arnold Classics in the same year. And then he would win every Arnold there is. And I know that's never going to happen. I just, in the back of my mind, I think how cool would that be if Hottie went for the three-peat and just won all three Arnold Classics. But I do like that we're going to have a new champion for the Arnold Classic South America. That's what makes it exciting. So I guess it kind of balances out there. Now... Now, next up in the news, I wanted to go over the competitor list for the upcoming Detroit Pro, which is coming up in April, April 14th to be exact. But as I'm talking about these shows kind of shaping up really nicely, they've already confirmed Vitaly Ugonikov is coming to do the Detroit Pro. They've also got John De La Rosa, who just had a really impressive showing at both Arnold Classics, the UK and the Ohio so that's a big that's a big get for their show. You've also got William Martins. You've also got Justin Rodriguez. Then you've got Mo Shaban, you've got Ron Gordon, and Martin Fitzwater. So that's who you have so far. I'm not, I'm not going to be surprised if you see more names added to that Detroit Pro lineup. But I'm going to be really interested to see how good Vito does here. So he's just going straight from Brazil to Detroit. So he's really trying to get that Olympia qualification. It doesn't look like he's messing around. He's really trying to get there. And I'm interested to see if good Vito actually makes it to the Detroit Pro. Because remember... When he was trying to compete towards the end of 2023, he was having a lot of trouble getting visas and traveling. And we don't know exactly why that is. We don't know if it's because he's from Russia. We don't know if it's because he has a criminal background. But he certainly was having trouble getting visas to the competitions that he said he was going to do towards the end of 2023. So I'm interested to see if he actually gets into the States to compete. So that's something to keep an eye on. But the Detroit Pro looks interesting. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking about going myself to that one. It's one of the ones that's not too far from me, so I could probably just drive up there. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today. Phil Heath, his documentary Breaking Olympia is out now, and this is free promo for Phil's documentary. It was really good. I watched it last night. You can watch it on, I believe, either Prime Video or YouTube. You can just go and like rent it on YouTube. But I'm not just talking about it to just give it a shout out. At the very end of the documentary, Phil Heath really made an announcement, kind of officially announced his retirement at the end of that documentary, something he's never said publicly at the very end. He says, I'm officially done competing. He says you'll never he specifically says you'll never see him in a pair of posing trunks ever again. And now he's on to the next chapter of his life. So there's been all this speculation um, because Phil still looks really good. He's still pretty big, pretty muscular guy. Will he come back? Will he? Won't he? Is he going to do this show, that show? He pretty definitively answered that question in this documentary. And again, it's something he hasn't really done publicly before on social media. We kind of knew, you know, he had taken a step back. But that's kind of the bodybuilding news that came out of the documentary, even though it was filmed a while ago. A statement that he's never made publicly is that he's never going to compete again. And he definitely put it in no uncertain terms. No, you know, he didn't really leave the door open. He pretty much gave you the direct answer. But if you guys are bodybuilding fans, which I know you are, 
you, I think you're really going to enjoy it. So I highly recommend just go on and rent it. I think it's like four or five bucks to rent. And it's a pretty long documentary too. It's pretty, it's pretty in depth. So I think you guys would really enjoy it. You get a lot of bang for your buck. And again, not a promotional video. I just really enjoyed it. And I think it, I think it's really worth watching. So that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon, all that good stuff. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.